In part one of this series, we looked at the very basics of modding The Witcher 2. We looked at the file structure and we installed a mod both manually and using a mod manager called Nexus Mod Manager. And in this video, we're going to move on and install a mod that has one extra little step. And that mod is Dynamic HUD. The heads up display or HUD for The Witcher 2 is actually pretty good. It's fairly minimalistic with a minimap in the top right hand corner, health bigger top left, and a quick indication of which sign and items you have selected. However, you don't really need to know your health and your vigor all of the time, especially when not in combat or perhaps wandering around the city. And Dynamic Hood basically gives you that option. It will only show you things like health and vigor when in combat or when you press the key that gives you this particular menu wheel. So let's get this installed and have a look what it does for us. I am actually going to be installing version 1.2. There are a few versions, including the latest version, which is 1.3. And the main change is that in 1.3, the minimap does not rotate. Now, I actually quite like the rotating minimap, so I'm going to stick with version 1.2. But that's also quite useful, seeing as version 1.3 does have a small bug when in Act 1, with the minimap being flipped. There is a fix for it. You can find it in the optional files. However, I haven't tried it, and I don't know what happens if you use the fix once you're in Act 2, purely because it says this version is only intended for use in Act 1. So I can't tell you about that. However, as I said, I prefer version 1.2 anyway, instead of 1.3. So that's the version I'm going to download. I'm going to download this file manually. It doesn't actually have an option to download with Nexus Mod Manager. Although I can tell you, this is one of those files that actually would work straight away. So I'm going to download that. And once it downloads, going to double click on it and just quickly check a single dzip file and a readme. I always recommend that you read the readmes as well as, of course, the description page. You should read especially the parts regarding installation, compatibility, and so on. However, the relevant file here is this dzip and the way it is structured. This file is ready to go without any changes and could have been downloaded directly from Nexus Mod Manager had that button been available. But as it wasn't, we're going to click on this icon, add mod from file and select the file we just downloaded. Then select it and activate. And believe it or not, the actual installation part of the mod is finished. However, there is one more small step. When you are in the game's launcher, go along to the option section and hit DLC settings. Go along to the top where it says official UI mod and make sure it is disabled. You want that disabled. Check dynamic hood dzip is enabled. It probably is by default. Just make sure it is enabled and click OK. That will make sure your new dynamic hood is used instead. And believe it or not, that is it. All you have to do now is launch your game and check it out. And there you go. Once in game, as you can see, no health, no vigor, just a mini map. If I select the quick menu, I get all of the information back, including the current quest, which again disappears. And if I can find something to pick a fight with. There's an Endriga. And all I need to do is hit it or get hit. As you can see, my health Damn monsters. has reappeared. If I put my sword away and run away, again, the health has disappeared. Which is perfect. And if I do a sign. As you can see, I still have access to the sign information even when out of combat. So don't worry about that. Combat's over. And the health disappears. 
And the same is true of the potions. If I go along and take a potion, the potion will still appear. Let's take Swallow Potion. The potion icon will appear even though the rest of the heads-up display has disappeared. So you still get all of the information you need. It's just a little cleaner. There you go. And that is basically all there is to it. It's got one extra little step, but on the whole, it's still a fairly simple process. However, in part three, we're going to start looking at mods that require a little more work. We're going to install a mod that is going to need a tool called Red Tools. So, if you want to check that video out and find out how we do that, you are more than welcome to join me there, and I look forward to seeing you. And until then, remember as always, have fun. Oh!